Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to pair a Brightspace course and a My Lab course. In my case, My Math Lab, but you know it could be any of the Pearson products. Uh, the process is a little odd um, to do this, and also throughout the video, I'll explain why you'd even want to do this. Uh, so let me get started. I'm going to just jump into one of my courses. I'm going to see if I could pick one this time that is not paired. I, last time I tried to do this, my first take, I picked one that was already paired. So let me just choose this random course and let's hope for the best. So once you're in your course, you're going to choose, go into content. And now once you're in content, good, this one's all right. Uh, you're going to create a module. You know, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine MML for my math lab. And now once here, you can go into existing activities, external learning tools, and if you haven't done anything yet, the only thing you're going to see in these tools is my lab and mastering. You're going to click on that. Now this is just step one of several, so if you think we're done, we're not done yet. Uh, next step is to click on that link. And now this course has not been paired. I mean, that's just the, this is the important step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on My Lab and Mastering Tools in order to do the pairing process. And then I'll click on Get Started. From here it's going to bring you to a familiar page potentially within Pearson, within my Math Lab or my Lab. I'm going to pick one of my courses. But you can also just choose a textbook, whatever you would do to create a course. You're essentially creating a course right now. So if you already have a course created in my, my math lab or my lab, uh, just realize that it's going to make a copy of that course. It won't be the exact one. And this has to be done before the semester starts. Uh, if there are students already enrolled in the course, you cannot bring them over this way. This has to be done in advance. So that's very important. So I'm going to pick just a, a regular course. Um, let's say this one right here. This is my Math 100 this fall. Uh, it's not going to bring any of the student information over. It's going to have me create a copy right here. You'll see. So it's a student course. I'm going to just call this Math 100 Test. Test. And I don't really care about the other stuff right now, but obviously you would choose what you need to do. I'm going to say the start date is today and the end date is tomorrow, so I don't have a bunch of extra courses in there. I'll create the course. And again, you might think we're done after this point. We're not done yet. Uh, it may take up to three hours. It will not take up to three hours uh, to do this. The way we'll know we're done, or the way we'll know that it, the pairing has started, is when I go back to the previous screen. So by the way, this screen we don't need anymore. I can shut it. On this screen right now, it looks blank. When I hit refresh, if it's done, you'll see it'll have that course information on it. And it does. You can see the book is there. So now I know we're, we're getting closer. So I'm not going to really need this window anymore either, although you'll see this window again later. So I'll go back into my Brightspace course. If I refresh this window, you're going to see some choices. And now you might think you got it. So you might click on this and try to add all these things to your course or whatever you wanted. And you'll see that I'm going to get an error when I do this. And so this is a little quirk of this process. So what we need to do now is something a little odd. We're going to go back into that module. So like, you know, table contents, the module is right there. I'm going to delete this module. Actually, I don't need to delete the entire module. I'm just going to delete this part of it, this topic. And you might be thinking, why would you do that? You just put it in there. Well, I don't know. It's a weird little quirk. Now I need to go into course admin. In Course Admin, that's essentially where you see your modules sort of as folders. It gives you more of a global view of how to edit things within your course. Well, sorry, not Course Admin, Course Builder. So Course Admin into Course Builder. This is where you see that global view. And so what I'm going to do, if you scroll down on the left in Add Content, there's the little Pearson widget. I'm going to drag that guy into MML, the module that I just created and have nothing in. Now, notice it's going to give me that same exact menu I had earlier. So I'm going to add all these links. And magic's going to happen this time. It didn't work before. But notice now it is working. And I honestly don't know the reason why this happens this way. I've played around with it for a while, and this seems to be the quickest way to go ahead and do this. And so you got to wait a little bit. And now we're good. Now everything's there. So when I go back into content, and back into that module, I'm already there actually, you can see all the links are there. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, if I click on My Math Lab Homework within this site, it'll bring me right into the homework section of My Math Lab in the window. So that's one of the reasons why you'd want to sync potentially, is that it gives students a single sign-on experience. 
Um, the other reason we're going to see in just a minute, and that's the grade syncing. Um, so go, to see the grade sync option, there's actually one last step to the synchronization process. We're not done. When we brought over those links, there's quite a few. You think surely there's enough links. We have everything we need, but there's one missing, and we didn't see it earlier. So when I go into existing activities, external learning tools, I'm going to see a new link. First of all, all the other links are there, but this My Lab and Mastering Tools was not there before, and it's not among the list of the things we have. So I'm going to click on that. So now you'll see that at the bottom. And I'll click on that one, and that's going to bring back that window I told you it would earlier. Except now it's embedded here. And so this is where you can sync your grades. So you can decide which of these items you want to put right into the gradebook in Brightspace. And that is number two, the number two reason, actually for many people, the number one reason why they would even bother pairing the courses. So my math lab does the grading for you. You still have access to everything within my math lab. But then if you want to get those grades over into your Brightspace gradebook quickly, this is how you do it. You can select just each assignment or all of them. Uh, and it's really up to you. It will not do it automatically. So don't expect uh, students to finish something in my math lab or my lab, and then all of a sudden the, it's in the Brightspace gradebook. You need to do this process yourself throughout the semester. Or if you're doing everything at the end, just grab them all at the very end of the semester. And once you sync it, they'll become gradebook items. So just to show you, just to prove to you that that's the case, I'll go ahead and grab this one. Um, actually, I will not <laughs> because there's no students in this course. I'll, in a minute, maybe I'll show you uh, how this looks in one of my courses. And I'll blur out the students so you can see that. All right, so we're just about done. Let me go back into that module. There's one other little piece that's important. So everything here is good. So when students click on these, they'll see things open up within the window of Brightspace. It'll be its own window. The navigation could be a little bit odd. Uh, let me just show you why. So notice the arrows up here. Those are the module to module navigation arrows. So if I click on this arrow, it's going to bring me to the next, sorry, the topic to topic navigation arrow. So that's going to bring me to the next topic within this module, uh, which is misleading because when they click into a homework and click onto a question, let's say, there are then going to be arrows within here that bring them to the next question. And so this is a bit misleading. So if you're worried that your students are going to get confused by this, there is an alternative to what we're doing right now. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to leave the page. That's fine. I'm going to go back into the module again. And one of my favorite tools uh, within Brightspace is this bulk edit option. So I'm going to click bulk edit. And notice now a bunch of stuff pops up, but the important one, the one that we care about, is this open as external resource. So I'm going to do that for the homework one. Now I'm done editing. Now you'll notice when I click on this My, my Math Lab homework, it's going to open in a separate tab. And notice now it's just, now we're actually in My Math Lab. So before when I did this, we were within the Brightspace environment. The Math Lab was embedded within Brightspace. Now this brings us out of Brightspace into My Math Lab. And so it's a preference. Um, there is a lag time for loading some things, so the external, you know, opening as external resource might save that time. Uh, a good example of that is for the ebook. So when I go in the home page as well, actually the home page, last time I checked, wasn't opening within this environment. That one you actually have to do as an external resource. It's just too big. It's too much for it to open. Uh, so that one you should just by default set it that way. And so to do that, if you just want to do one item instead of bulk editing, you can go here, uh, click on the arrow, edit properties in place, and now that'll come up and you click that and then you're set. And it's, it's good, but I'm looking for the ebook. Where's that ebook hiding? There it is. So the e-text, if I click on that, it will open up within the window. It just takes a minute. And so you can see spinning, spinning, spinning. It's taking longer than the homework problems did. So if you want your students not to wait so long, you might use the external resource option for that one as well. But that's up to you. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question of how to pair, and once you're paired, you're good to go. Uh, you could also, in the module, decide which of these links you want the students to see, and you can still use that bulk edit option to do that. So let's say I don't want students to look at uh, Pearson announcements. I don't care about the Pearson announcements. I would just put that as draft. So they don't have to be bothered with that. If you're not giving quizzes or tests, you might put that as draft as well. Uh, you know, anything. And then I always put this mastering tools as draft, I honestly don't think anything would happen if it was there for the students. They wouldn't be able to do anything with it, but they have no reason to see it. That's all. So you could decide what goes in. You could also set dates and rest restrictions, but that's probably not something you want to do here because you don't have the ability to put a single assignment as a topic within a module. I heard that that ability might be coming soon, but it doesn't exist right now. 
Okay, so last thing, since this is a getting to be a very, very long video. I'll make sure I'm still recording. I am, thank, thankfully. Uh, I'm going to jump into a course that I'm currently teaching. And again, I'll, I'll make sure to blur out names uh, so you don't get to see students' grades. So I'm teaching this one, the course I'm teaching. So I want to show you this synchronization process. So I'll go into content. I'll go into my math lab. For me, it's my math lab. For you, it might just be my lab. And I'll click on those mastering tools. Don't ask me why I have two of them here. I'm not sure. Um, and I'll go ahead and click on Grade Sync. And now I want to believe that the most recent one I did was this number seven. So I'm going to click on that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and sync grades now. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take anything that's in my math lab for that homework seven and bring it into my grade book. And it's done. And so I can go to the gradebook to see the updates. So I'll just go into content, not sorry, into assessments, grades. And as I look, actually, what I'll do to be clever, I don't even need to show you the student stuff. I can just show you in manage grades. So in manage grades, I've got a bunch of stuff. But one of the things that's in there now is where to go? There it is. MML homework seven. I'm actually kind of glad it came in this way. So notice I work in a I work in a weighted system. See all the weights. And so I've got a My Math Lab homework category. It did not put it automatically into that category. Uh, that's something notable. So right now, this is not where it needs to be. So just for a little extra bonus here to fix, you know, to fix this gradebook item, there is a, a way to do that. You go ahead and click on that item. It's a fast way to do it at least. More actions. Nope, I'm lying. Not more actions. Bulk edit. Again, bulk edit. And notice if you scroll to the right, you can choose the category. So I'm going to put that where it belongs in my Math Lab homework. And I'm good. Now, if you wanted to override a grade within Brightspace, you could do that. But just note that if you sync again, there's a chance that it'll revert back to whatever's in my Math Lab. So just make sure you check that um, before you enter any grades. OK, so we've reached you know probably the 10 minute mark here. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, you know, ask one of your, you know, Brightspace support staff at, at your college. Uh, but otherwise, have a great day. Bye.